Lawn Brandon Meeks here. Uh, just doing a little video update for what's going on currently in my life. Uh, reporting my news to the people that follow me. Uh, I got court on Thursday. I'm facing charges for violating a protective order. Uh, I didn't violate the order. Uh, these people try and act like me violating it is doing what I'm doing right now. In uh, January, February of 2019, a lawyer in Durant, Oklahoma by the name of John Houston Nix committed contract fraud and tried to put a lifelong injunction in on the fly without pleading for it orally or in writing, violating my constitutional right to talk about the corruption and fraud that was committed against me. And you're just not allowed to do that. A person is not allowed to change court documents after they're signed. They put in you know, over a thousand extra words into my divorce decree after I signed it, attempting to strip me of my freedom of speech, but the supremacy clause of the United States Constitution and my constitutional rights of freedom of speech, freedom of the press, freedom of religion, and my right to bear arms are all tied to me not disarming myself by stripping myself of my voice, which is my weapon and how civilized uh, people are supposed to communicate with each other. I haven't seen my daughter since January 6, 2019. Uh, I pretty much just do little videos like this to talk about what was done to me. Uh, my daughter was never supposed to be exiled from my life. Uh, Robert William Henderson and Megan Colleen, now Henderson, formerly known as Meeks or McArdle or Shemanek, uh, took my kid from me and I have not seen her since January 6, 2019. I've been through therapy. My therapist is all on board for my use of this as cathartic release to at least make it feel like I'm doing something, uh, you know, I mean, technically I'm a victim, but I don't like, I don't like saying I'm a victim. Like I'm, I've come through this, the other side, like a str stronger person mentally. Like I have a lot more understanding of the world around me. I know that I'm not the first person, nor will I be the last person that has to deal with uh, corruption in the civil court system. And, you know, judges really, I mean, I, I feel like that the thing that sets this, to where it's so commonplace is that there are so many people that lie in the court systems that whenever there is an actual victim that comes through the pipeline that needs protection, uh, they get buried in a sea of people that are just using that protection as a weapon. And, you know, protective orders are weaponized. And I mean, I got a protective order put on me because, uh, my wife's boyfriend was an attorney in Durant, Oklahoma, and he had deep ties in this small town where there's literally two to three judges in this whole town and only, you know, a dozen or a dozen to 20 lawyers in the entire town. So she'd seen him come through there with a lot of court cases and seen his, his ethic and the way he fights for his clients and stuff like that. So she had some kind of grounds for what she was dealing with, but this guy is, he was, he was manipulated by someone who's very good at manipulating people and he he made some bad decisions and I feel like he's so pot committed to those bad decisions that he's just uh, he's just stuck with the choices he's made and he's just doubling down on stupidity. I mean this guy graduated pretty high in his class in law school. You know, and that's my one of my main problems in this is like I'm battling lawyers. Like these are lawyers and when I hear them say stuff that's uh, not right, like they, they have to know that you can't change a court document after it's signed. They have to know that if, you know, John Houston Nix, there's a big billboard coming into Duran, Oklahoma with John Houston Nix. So like every time I get to go up there for a court hearing, I, got to, I get to look at this guy who I know knowingly lied to a judge. Like I, I read the transcript for the court case, he knowingly lied to the judge because it contradicted the conversation that I had with him. And I had that conversation on tape. And uh, all I ever wanted out of this whole thing since the beginning of me screaming online, like this is my screams, this is the screams of a victim. Like, I mean, I am a victim even though I don't want to 
take on a victim mentality like right now i face the fear of going to jail potentially like i don't i feel like the odds are minuscule like minuscule that a jury would actually convict me after hearing the full details of this whole story like this protective order i didn't violate it i didn't contact anybody i didn't go within range of anybody but even if i did i feel like i would be justified but i didn't i didn't go near any of them like i feel like i want to just step back give them the opportunity to come to their senses and do the right thing but man like how many years of my daughter's life have been missed already like i don't i don't get to I don't even know whether my daughter is alive. Like that's a that's a hell of a position to be in as a father to not know. You know there was a there was an incident that happened pretty early on where uh, there was a continuance because there was a death in the family. That's all I heard. There's a death in the family. I don't know who died. I don't know if my daughter is alive. Like I feel like. I, I feel like she is. Like I feel like she she is. But I mean I don't know. I'm, I'm, I post stuff like this online so that maybe one day somebody else can come across this and maybe not make the bad decision that I made. Like I was, con I was tricked. Like my wife was working at a law firm and just to find out how common this is for lawyers to have affairs with their secretaries. This guy had, a, he had a wife, he had beautiful kids, he had a nice home, like, why was he messing with the secretary like why was they're paralegal you know i don't want to dismiss her as just a secretary but like why why would he give up his family his kids futures of sanity you know it looks like everybody's already went off and got remarried but me like i'm the only one that's still just sitting here in the trauma of having my kid ripped out of my life i did get custody of my other two kids uh for a brief moment cps you know, they, they tried using CPS as a control tactic. CPS lady showed up at my house. She said, wow, your house is cleaner and more organized than even my house. But uh, I'm a good dad. I'm a good person. I, I, I'm going to keep fighting. Uh, I'm telling you, the day that a judge looks me in the eye and explains to me why I can't do what I do uh, and is willing to have that opinion be heard by the world, then I'll, I'll stand behind it, I'll stay silent. But until that day, you know, the last thing I got is Judge Abby Rogers saying, just because you can do something doesn't mean you should do something. And I can uh, use my freedom of speech, my freedom of the press, and my right to bear arms through my voice because I use my voice as my weapon. And I should because this is injustice. This is major levels of injustice. It's provable corruption. Like, I don't know. I really don't know how many judges, lawyers, Freemasons are all tied to this, but uh, I don't deserve what they've done to me. Like, honestly, all I did was not stay silent. Like, I've not stayed silent since the beginning. You know, like when. I was played for a fool and manipulated for eight months by Rob Henderson and then like a year by my wife, like while she was manipulating him and you know, he was the sucker that fell for all that, but, and now he's married to her and they got a kid. So now they got, you know, <sighs> anyways, I feel like, you know, I'm just, Thursday is coming up. So like every day, like my thoughts are pretty wound up and in, in what's going on and you know, you know, the potential of like losing everything. Like if, if I went to jail, if they got like a 30 day jail charge to stick to me, like that would destroy my life. Like it would, it would destroy my son's life. It would, I mean, I got a lot of fail safes in place to hopefully protect me, but man, that's counting on a lot of people to do what they say they're going to do in the event that something bad goes, goes south or, you know, if something bad happens. Uh, home cooked that's the that's the word rob henderson used when he talked about getting uh people in your hometown to help you beat someone uh in court and an you know unfair disadvantage or unfair advantage or whatever like i haven't seen my daughter since january 6 2019 that is a long time to be without your daughter and this was my baby girl this is my center of my universe when she was ripped out of it she was the center of my universe i was trying to figure out everything i could to stay in her life like I was paying child support, I was 
paying way more than child support. I was dumping every dollar I made into that household and then she went into a court and she lied to a judge and told them that I wasn't helping her and that she could easily handle it on her own. She lied to the judge. <sighs> they have lied to the judge so much throughout the court, the process of this, the, the judges. And I feel like if I were a judge, like I would take personal offense to the fact that they manipulated and lied to me like they did. Like these lawyers should have went in there with like, I feel like when a lawyer is talking to a judge, they should be considered under oath. And Rob Henderson in the first protective order hearing said that he never used any drugs that weren't prescribed to him by a doctor. And then in the second protective order hearing, admitted to using amphetamine usage and then amphetamines to help him get caught up on some backed up court cases. And then said that I was his dealer so that he could make me worse than him because the dealer's worse than the user. And I was not his dealer, so I don't know I mean, I know why he did it, but uh, I feel like the lie in the first one should have been enough for the judge to see that, you know, he's lying in the second one. And I mean, in the very beginning of it, I looked over at him and I said, you know, can we work this out? And he said, no. And he said, there's no world where me and Lon Brandon Meeks are gonna go down the river together. And I just, I can't understand it. I don't know what I've done wrong except not stay silent. That's it. You can't, you can't tell me. I know I was never violent. I was never a drug addict. I was never alcoholic. I was, I'm not abusive. Like I'm mentally, like I keep things in the light. I feel like that's the only way for anything to get taken care of is to just keep it public. You know, you can't, you can't make false allegations if everything's done in the public, you know? So this is the way, this is the way I handle things to, you know, give myself some kind of peace. And, uh, I feel like it works for me. I, it, you know, they say insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. Well, on the other end of this, the, the people that have a problem with me saying things continue doing the things that they're doing and they're expecting different results and they're not going to get them. So I feel like this is, this, is a, this is a long game, you know? I've already beat two charges. I'll beat this third. I'm very confident that I'll beat this third. But man, it scares me that, you know, I've heard some weird stuff about like, you know, just lawyers going in the back signing stuff without even letting you plead your case or nothing. And I think Jason Pedraza is not going to be that type of person for me. He's a little hard to contact sometimes, but uh, I think that I think that we can get this snuffed out. Uh, I love my daughter. I miss my daughter every single day. My kids have not seen their sister in the same amount of time period. So anyways i'm gonna get off here i feel like this is long enough love y'all thanks for listening people of durant this stuff don't need to be going on in y'all's town this is wasted tax dollars like a lot of wasted money a lot of wasted tax dollars like i feel like they should be arrested for theft just for all the money that they've stolen out of the time uh judges lawyers cops prosecutors victim people like you know all these people could be busy dealing with someone who's actually a victim of something instead of someone that is just using this system as a tool to battle someone it's it's insane but anyways and, and i'm absolutely certain that all these choices were made while they were on amphetamines like you know i'm certain that megan got pretty far into her. her teeth started messing up she had to start going to see a dentist for little black specks popping up on her teeth and that was she had immaculate dental hygiene and i know that even with immaculate dental hygiene amphetamines will destroy your teeth but anyways love y'all once again bye